All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Overshot, a paintball podcast. I am juiced up for our guest, but before we get started with him, I got to tell you about the A1 from day one. They're Dizana Sports. They make the SF joggers and the Grind Air gloves. Uh, version 2 joggers have shipped out. Um, if you go to their website, DizanaSports.com, you can actually find Overshot merch there. We have joggers that you can go purchase, so definitely go pick them up. And at checkout, use code OVERSHOT10. You'll save 10% off your entire order. So definitely go do that. Um, and yeah, you save 10% off everything. And also Volcano. They make these awesome new bags. They're like little backpacks. They're not too big. They're not too small. I know we love them up here in the Northeast because it's a backpack and it's about to start snowing probably within a couple weeks. So now you're not lugging your gear bag through the snow. You're just carrying it on your bag and you're rocking and rolling, man. So go to Volcano USA and the code for them is Overshot10 and you'll save 10% off your bag. But now that that is over, I'm super excited to get to our guest from the Wild Dogs. Um, they're going to be coming hot for this World Cup. So, uh, um, Carmelo, so I just really want to know, how did the team get started? Where did it come from? And then kind of lead into how the team has progressed. And we'll get into this point and just keep going. Okay. So, first of all, I wanted to appreciate because this invitation is really nice for us. So, thank you very much for, for the life so we can tell like uh, our history. So for a start, like I wanted to tell you where, where is the hometown from the team? The hometown from the team is from Colombia, okay? We are from Pereira. Uh, this is team, it was created by Diego Gallego. He started to play with his two sons, okay? These two sons are Andres and Diego Gallego Jr., okay? They start the team only with people from Colombia. They start to compete in 2005. Okay, is, is the year that the, the teams uh, grows up. Then they they played their first PSP in 2006. And something like uh, I will say is really nice, was the first team from Colombia to win a point in PSP. Like uh, you say, <laughs> win a point for us is, is, yeah. is big because was the first team, like a lot of people was trying to go over there, trying to play, but no one was winning. Okay, so yeah. this team will like uh, make the, the history in, in Colombia winning the first point. Now that's okay. a big deal. I mean, think about it. Paintball back then, it was just the big American bullies, man. Old men just pushing people around. Yeah, yes, of course. Then I, I start to play in 2006, okay? And then I start to play in 2007 with Wild Dogs. So since 2007, I've been together with with Diego and his two sons, like uh, for me, they're, they're like a kind of family because, you know, we, we start to travel a lot. We start to compete in USA. So we start to build the team, okay? So in Colombia, we always was playing the national leagues. We always were winning, but then we start like, a, we feel like a, a necessity to show like a, or, or way of play in USA. We always was traveling only from Colombia, all the all the World Cups since 2007. We start to travel all like uh, 2008, 2010, and we never lose the World Cup, okay? And mm -hmm. then in in Latin America, they built something that was called the Dream Team, okay? The dream, mm -hmm. the dream Team was managed by a guy, and the idea of this guy was to pick up the best player from Latin America, okay, and put it together in a, in a team, and call it the dream team, okay? So most of the players that right now are in the team, they used to go to the dream team. I cannot do it because I was in the college in that time, and, and, okay. my, and my father doesn't allow me to travel because I went like in the final test of the college, okay? Mm -hmm. So that was, was for the World Cup. I think that was that's around 2014, 2015. I don't I don't get the, 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 sack, the sack year, but it was around mm -hmm. those years, okay? But only works for the World Cup, and that dream team died. So then we start to get meetings with Diego, with his two sons, and we say, "Hey, what are we gonna do?" In Colombia, we don't have like uh, the players to go to comp to to go and compete in the USA in the NXL. So we decide yeah. let's build a wild of Latin America. So what we do, we grab the best players of each country. Okay. Also, because to play paintball, you need the resource, you know. And, and for us that we are from South America, Latin America, it's pretty tough because 
like in Colombia, the minimum salary of a people, the minimum salary is around three hundred dollars per month. Okay, so you so you get the idea. Yeah, so that is the minimum salary. So, like here, if you shoot a, a case of paintball uh, in a weekend, you, you are rich. For example, okay, the person that yeah. go and, and purchase two 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 cases for us, two cases in the field, we are talking around we are talking around. Seventy dollars, eighty dollars, two cases. Okay, like yeah. uh, for you, you say you can't find your pay. You 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 can find on, around cases of twenty, twenty-five. Okay, so you can shoot more. That that is yeah. that is the big difference. So the idea is we have to grab the best players of each country. Okay, and also the players that has the capabilities to go and play over there. So we start in two thousand sixteen. We build Wild of Latin America, playing the World Cup in D2. Who are the players we build that team? We start, okay, we are have the three from Colombia was and, and uh, Diego Jr., Andres Gallego Jr., uh, Andres Gallego, and me, okay, from Colombia. And then we grab one from Venezuela, Daniel. We have another one from, from Ecuador, Felipe Ramirez. Another one from Argentina, Paulo Lopez. And we have one from Puerto Rico, okay, Melvin Gonzalez. Those seven start the, the project from Wild Goods Latin America. And yeah. we play in D2, okay? In those times, we, we, we advantage the first round and then we lose, okay? But for our beginning, because it's, it's difficult for us because we never train together. We know each other because we play tournaments, they come to Colombia, we go outside the country to play, okay? They also know from the dream team. So that is why we decided to build the team with those guys. Mm -hmm. For that was talking around in 2016. Then in 2017, we say, okay, we have to play the whole season. Why? Because right now the national leagues from Colombia, they doesn't allow us to play us because we always was beating, beating, getting their first playing in, in all day in both yeah. leagues. So they, they one day they say, hey guys, you have to stop coming playing the, the the tournaments because the teams doesn't want to play with you because you always are, are beating the teams. So so they, they have to say, hey, you have to step away. Yeah. It, it's, it's really sad because it's supposed that you always want to play with the with the best ones. Okay, like in the say in the case of us. So we start to compete in, in D2, the same team. In some tournaments, we have to replace some people because not all the all the same team has the, the money, the time to travel. Because, example, if, if for us, a ticket from Colombia for Las Vegas, we are talking around $600, okay? So imagine $600. Hey, Pablo, the guy from Argentina, all the tickets, thousand dollars, always. So, so it's it's pretty tough. Okay, it sounds really tough. Yes, and then you have to manage uh, with the uh, renting the vans, the house, the tournament, mm -hmm. the trainings. So the the package starts to increase. So it's a lot of things that you have to manage. Yeah, it's very so, expensive. Um, then we start to play D two that year. Okay, the first the first three tournament the first the free, the first three tournaments was really tough, really tough because D two is it has pretty decent paintball, it has a lot of quality. Okay, yeah. So we don't do sure. it really good the first three the first three tournaments in Chicago. We make the click, okay, and we play finals in Chicago against Hurricanes, and we lost the final by this one by one point because we make a mistake. I remember that we we were uh, we were uh, tied to two, and they gave a major to them. So in the next point, we're going five against three, and we lost that point. Oh. So 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 we lost we lost the final, and then in the World Cup. So in Chicago, we took the second place, and in the World Cup, we go to the four best. We we get to semifinals, and then we lose the semifinals, and we play for the third and for the fourth place against Boom, and then we lose the that that game. So in the overall of the season, we took the second place in the two. Okay, 
what we think, hey, we say, hey, we have to play a game, another season in D2, we have to get more finals, we have to get more experience. So we wanted to play in D2, but what happens? They start to increase the ranks of the players. So they doesn't allow us to play in D2 more. Immediately, we have to play semi-pro, so we say, fuck. We, we wanted to, to make like a, a better perfect a better paper to show our talent in D2, but it doesn't allow us because immediately like four or five players of the teams go to D1 in the APA, in the rank of yeah. the APA. So that is what happened. So I'm with starting semi-pro. In semi-pro, it's like a... It's, <laughs> we don't say... Like, no, it's, it's tough, but like uh, what we talk is, okay, in one-on-one, we have like a, the same quality, we have the same capabilities, okay? Mm -hmm. What is the big difference is the team that you start to play is like a team. So you have the guy that scout the other the other team. You have the guy that help us with the paint. We don't yeah. have that kind of thing because we travel only eight people. Yeah. And that is the team. So the, the one that is Diego Papa, the, the Papa Doc is Diego Gallego. He's the one that coach us and also is the one that is cleaning, filling up the pots, uh, grabbing the pots in the field, okay? So so it, it's difficult for us because when you see a semi-pro, they have like uh, 10 people in the staff and the mm -hmm. player is only thinking in play and that's all. For us, like uh, we are making everything in the pits. So also that is that is the big difference. And no, that's, another... that's a huge deal, man. Like for sure, like you, you said it, like, you have got to be able to focus on the game. That should be your main focus out there. I mean, especially in pro, think about it. You're trying to play professional dudes out there. You don't want to be worrying about like, oh, is my fucking pod dirty? Yes, exactly. So that that is like um, that is like uh, the, the challenge we have when we travel over there, okay? But of course, the organization, Wildos, is, is, is growing, and that is something that I will tell you later. So like... Uh, continue with the history with the history of the team so we start in semi-pro okay uh, it's, it's tough because we don't have like uh, the advantage of all the teams another thing that doesn't help us is we live in different countries okay mm -hmm. so remember that we have three guys from colombia okay we have one from puerto rico one from argentina one from ecuador right now we have another from panama that is eddie vasquez and we have a Venezuelan guy. So imagine how we can train together. We, the only way is that we travel like at the events. It starts on Fridays. We travel the same week. We arrive on Tuesday or Monday. So we train together. Tuesday, Monday, and Thursday. That is the only three days we have to play together. And, and also another thing is uh, the, the National Leagues doesn't play the same field, the same layout from the NXL, okay? Wow. Because you know that the paintball is a business. So if they put the same layout from the NXL, okay, what happens? That the teams will not go to train over there to shoot paint, okay? So that is why they launch the layout of the of the tournament. They launch two months, like uh, the tournament is in January. They launch the layout today, so the teams start to go and practice it and feel the layout so they can shoot paint, okay? Because they why they, they doesn't do it with the layout of the NXL because, you know, they launch it 15, 20 days uh, before the, the event. So if they do it, the teams will doesn't go and practice to the field, okay? So they also have to survive. Yeah. That is the thing. So it, it's a month, a, a lot of things that's putting together does, doesn't help us. But, but we try, we keep insisting, we keep in traveling, uh, we try to put it together, travel two weeks, uh, trying to find teams to train in, uh, training with pro. In one year, we bring um, a coach that is Richie Telford. We grab him for, like for two events, okay? We say, hey, we have, to hire, we have to hire you to help us. And we bring him to Colombia. We make a special training, okay? But also... Uh, was very difficult because he doesn't share a lot of days with us and, and he doesn't know us a lot because he doesn't know us from, from three days of training. And you know that a, a guy, you doesn't know, see him playing three, three days, okay? 
So right. also you have to start to, to know the strength of the people, what is the, uh, maybe the way of the thinking of the people. This one, this guy is more aggressive, this guy play more calm. I know when I put pressure on this guy, he will, it will react different of this guy. So it, it's a lot of things, okay? No, for sure. So uh, what year are you, you we're talking about right now? So Rich is coming in. So did you start Rich last year? Or when did Rich start coaching? Uh, uh, Rich uh, coaches the last year. Last year. The last year he coaches for, for two events. Two events. For Vegas and Dallas. Okay. And then uh, did you guys play Chicago? That was the next event, right? Uh, no. The, then was Philadelphia. Philly, Philly, Philly. Right, right. Philadelphia and then Chicago. In Chicago, we, 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 I think that we do it a, a, good, a good tournament. Okay, mm -hmm. because we have we advantage the first round. We don't lose any match in uh, playing semi pro. Okay, then we play further uh, against DMG, and we lose in overtime. Was like um, was difficult because we were winning. Uh, we were winning three two, and in the last ten seconds they make us a major and was tired. We we were winning. We mm -hmm. entered to the field with fifth. 50 seconds, five zero seconds to play. And in the last 10 seconds, they make us a major and was the, the sweet point for them. Yeah. And we have to play over time and then we lose in over time. Uh, we have so, so, so close, yes. yes. We were so close to play the semifinals in semi-pro. Oh, that's brutal, that's brutal. So, all right, I guess that's going in to this year. Uh, did you guys play Vegas the first event this year or no? Yes, yes. We, we played Vegas the first the, the first event. Okay, so how did that event go for you guys? It was, was so so. Like, so sad, what yeah. happened? Yes, was was really so so because the first day we lost the, the, the two matches and the second day we won, we won both. But oh. again, what happens? What, what was happening in the tournaments? On Saturday, we start to play good. Why? Because we only train together two days. In Vegas, we, we, we train on, on Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah, and yeah. even on Friday. So on Friday, okay, we, we, we doesn't play good. And then on Saturday, we win both, we win both games. So we always say, like, uh, we need the extra day or we need more time to, 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 to know what are the shoots. Uh, to know what are the plays we have to do because it's really difficult because we have to adjust the team in only three days. That that, that is like a, the, the big issue for us. Something that we're going to change to try to make a, a better, a better hard to say how to make a, a better show in, in the pro division. We we are planning to have a special training here in Colombia that I'm gonna tell you right now, like how we built a field in Pereira that is the hometown of the team. Okay, mm -hmm. only to train, and the whole team is going to travel this uh, in October 13. In the next week, they will arrive here, so we're gonna be together one week in the field. Uh, probably they will launch the layout, so we have more time to training, and also we travel on Monday, November 9th. We travel to Miami and then to Orlando, and we're gonna train in on Tuesday and Wednesday in uh, the field in the NXL. So this time we're going to try to, to have more time together. So all the people, all the team will travel for their countries. They will travel to Colombia. There you go. Now that's going to, I think, help you guys a lot. Cause yeah, I think time on the layout is super important. Like you said, you need time to get those shots dialed in, find it out, even find out where the shots are, you know? Yeah, yes, yes. That, that is the, the most important thing that also you have to understand you have to know all the sides of the field you have to know the snake side the rear side the 50. you need you need to know all the choose of each of each bunker uh, yeah that, that is very important and and the thing in colombia you cannot do it what i tell you first of all the fields doesn't doesn't put the layout of the nxl that is one of the reasons another reason is not all the fields from from our countries have the updated bunkers so also that that is pretty tough. Yeah, yeah. So so going off that, so this new field is this is your guys' own field. This is a Wild Dogs field, and you guys are going to have the updated bunkers to kind of because before you weren't really practicing the layout till you got to the states, correct? 
Yes, like uh, for this time, we already built the field. Uh, we are finished putting some some details, but we already have the bunkers. We purchased a, a field that was used in, in Vegas, a virtual field, the blue one. We already purchased, they already arrived in Pereira. Uh, and we're gonna start to practice since, the, since this weekend. It's gonna be the first practice in the field. Dude, that's fucking awesome. No, I mean, yes. that, that, that's definitely going to help you guys because it sounds like you got guys from all over, you know, barely playing the layout. I know there's been a lot of chatter um, about you guys kind of coming up because you guys, um, you know, didn't have the greatest results in semi-pro, but you kind of going through it, you can kind of tell where the team's at. And, I mean, there has been teams before that hasn't done well in semi-pro. Um, so when did you guys know that you guys were going to get – the invite to play pro was that done after vegas was that like when did you guys realize you guys were going to be playing pro like, for the world cup uh, we rise like in quarantine with this call like uh two months back okay the nxo give us the new that we were invaded by them because like the idea that have stone call from the nxl is that the world cup he wanted to make it a real world cup okay well, so what they explain us is they're going to invite two teams from Europe, one from Asia, and one from Latin America. Okay? So they see, like, um, Wild Dogs is in competing since 2016, as I tell you. It's the most constant team. So, like, um, we deserve, like, that, like that field. We deserve, like, that place in the field of the pros. Okay? So that was the, the big idea, and they let us know, like, uh, two months back. Okay, that was an invitation to play in the pro division. No, that's that's crazy. So, like, so yeah, what is it like? Like, how how did that make you feel? Like, when you found out you're going to play pro, like, how juiced were you? Like, through the roof, right? I mean, you had to be so excited. Like, no, like for us, like, is is a dream becoming true? Like. Always, we were traveling. Is something that this, this can be funny for for you, for the people. That is is a history I wanted to tell you. Like uh, we always that travel to the World Cup in 2008, 2008. All the years we always try to help the pros in the pits. Okay, so we try to get inside the the pits, pro. Okay, without the ID, but we we because we like to to help them. Uh, cleaning, yeah. filling up the pots, seeing, playing, okay? So when we were like a 16, 17 years old that we started to travel to the World Cup, we always was the dream, hey, one day we have to play in this field with these guys. So when they give us the new, because uh, frankly speaking, we respect all the pros players, uh, like uh, for us, most of them like uh, are heroes for us, okay? We are fans of most of the players. So oh, yeah. also it's like, uh, it's, it's really nice that we can share the, the same field, okay? And we have to give them the respect that is because they are being playing pro from a lot of, of time. So we also have to see them with respect, okay? It's not like, uh, okay, we are right over here. We, we're going to choke them. It's going to be easy. It's not that easy because we have a lot of teams being playing the pro more than 15 years. So also we, we, we see them with respect. And that is something that we know. And always, right now, everybody is studying, everybody is, is training in their country, watching the, the webcast, studying each player. We already know what is the draw. So each one has to study each player of the team we're going to play. So, so we are making the job, okay? Because we also want to, they give us the opportunity to play over there. And so they give us the opportunity. We have to show that also we have the capabilities to be there because we cannot go over there and lose all the all the matches seven zero. Mm -hmm. It cannot happen. Yeah. And we are preparing to make that doesn't happen. Okay, we want to give the fight. No, dude, that's that's freaking awesome. And yeah, like you guys were blessed with an opportunity. Why would you not take it? And it's great to hear that you guys are really trying your hardest because I mean, let's let's be honest. The the topper tier teams tend to feast on the lower tier teams. You know. So the fact that you guys are trying hard to make sure you're not, you know, you're not the ones getting eaten is fucking awesome to hear. Yeah, yes, and 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 something you know that some teams from from Latin America they also hire pro pro players to come to play the tournaments here, and, right, and that yeah. is something that 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 I wanted to tell always that we play a tournament like kind of team ring. 
two pro players, they never win the finals. Like I put an example, in one South America team, it was a, a team that was called Evolution, and they bring Brandon Shore and Scott Kemp. They just win the, the World Cup with Iron Man. Okay, we play the final against them, they lose. Okay, and making two, making two pro players then, and also to America, they bring uh, Edwards, and they also bring Kate Brown. Just winning the World Cup with Damash. Also, they lose the final. So for us, when, when they come here to Colombia, we try to 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 beat them, like uh, to fight with them. We have to to beat those guys. Yeah, don't run from the challenge. Take it head on. I'm going to tell you this, though. It's definitely hard for Americans to win in South American countries. Yes. <laughs> they, they, even even they, they, they tell us, like, uh, it's, it's come, Ken, I remember what time we were in the, in the pro pits helping him. And he said, hey, guys, you, you are making a really good in South America because how is they travel to South America? It, it's, it's, pre, it's pretty hard that they win over here. It's, it's the few cases that can say that have a first place in Colombia. Mm -hmm. No, for sure. So I know you were, you were talking about a bunch of different pros, you know, Scott Camp and stuff and guys you were helping in the pits. But like what pro has really like helped you kind of blossom into the player you are? You're saying you spend a lot of time in like pits. Like, has anyone stood out in your mind where you're like, his advice really helped no. me get over the hump? Like, uh, when we start, we used to use GI Sports. Okay, he used the ones the main is a sponsorship for us. Uh, we have to thank full them because it was like at the first company to trust us to support us in the NXL. So we were playing with GI Sports since 2016, since the last year. Okay, right now we play with HK Army and Lux, okay? But when we start to go and travel to USA, AC Dallas and Dallas Diesel, they help us a lot in the beginning because we have the opportunity to train with them in the in the spots that they give us in the NXL before the, the tournament, okay? So they help us a lot, okay? Like at the coach of the AC Diesel, he, hey, you have to shoot over here. This one is a good shoot. That was when we were playing D2, okay? So they, they help us a lot. Also, Rich Terfo, as a coach, uh, he gave us a, a lot of help. And the last in the last year, we have a practice with Russian Legion. Like for us, Wild Dogs, Russian Legion's always going to be like a, the, the top team. For us, we always see the videos, the way they play, the way they shoot, the way they slide. We like it a lot, okay? Uh, uh, and we like to play like them. And the last the last year, we have a practice in Central Florida the whole day with them. So also, they are helping us a lot. Dude, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome to hear that Greg Pauly is helping you out a lot. Like, that makes me feel good on the inside that, um, like you said, people are trying to help you guys out because... <coughs> <laughs> Sorry, excuse me, dude. Tr trying to step up to play pros is gonna is gonna is gonna be tough. So you guys are gonna need definitely all the help you can get. But um, so like, have you gotten any word that you guys are gonna remain pro? Like, have you gotten where it's just for World Cup? Like, have you gotten any word about like what's gonna maybe happen in the future? No, like the the only new we have is like we're going to play World Cup. Like, yeah, we, that, that is what we have. What we have seen in our mind is we have to make the, the best presentation in, in, pro, in, in the World Cup, in the pro field, to see what is happening. So right now what we know is that we're going to play the World Cup. For the next year, we don't know what is going to happen. Yeah, no, that's a good attitude to have, like in any uh, sport. You can say, just worry about the game in front of you and then let the rest yeah, fall yeah, in place, yes. you know? Yes. That, uh, and something, another thing that, that I wanted to tell you is like... Um, the the why does Latin America organization is growing like it's growing since the last year so since the last year we're grabbing people from different countries from Latin America and we start to build the division of teams like uh, for this case for the World Cup we are bringing four teams three for the uh, playing D4 and one playing D3 also that oh, is yeah. help is helping us a lot because we help us with the stuff that we require to play over there and that has happened since the last year we are traveling with one team or two teams and for this time for the world cup 
we get 14. So also we are, we are helping the industry. We want the industry still growing. We always want to play paintball. And what we do is we put together people from different countries and make it the same exercise that we do with Guadalupe Latin America. We mix the countries and we start to put the players together. Yeah, awesome. that's so, yeah. Oh, sorry, I got a question, Waldo, but you can go first. No, go ahead, man. So like, I'm just kind of curious in general, like in Colombia, what is the paintball scene like? Is it mainly just recreation? No paintball and people just playing in little huts and behind sticks. Like I know you say there is a local tournament scene. Is it kind of big or is it really like is it small? Like tell us a little bit about. No, like uh, in Colombia, paintball is like uh, I, like I was a child, like less than ten years old. My father took me to play in the the woods pool. Okay, mm -hmm. take me with his friends and everybody start like that. Go first of all to rental and then you go to a speedball. Okay. In 2000, in around 2002, 2003, like the tournaments start to be uh, happen here in Colombia by speedball. Mm -hmm. And since 2005, uh, the industry start to grow. Uh, we have two national leagues and a tournament. It could be the highest uh, numbers of teams that, that can have a, a national league is around 40 teams. Okay. Oh, that's fucking good, dude. 40 teams split in, in three divisions, D3 uh, stars, D3, D4, and D5 here in Colombia. No, dude, that's good. That's good to hear that paintball is like so popular. And yeah, you say so D3 is the highest that they kind of offer? Yes, yes. D, D3, oh, they put it open. So open. because yeah, yeah. always that because when they bring teams, what is what is normal in Colombia that teams from Venezuela, Ecuador, Panama from different countries travel to play the National League. Because when you make like a, a survey in Latin America, most one of the highest level in, in South America and Latin America is Colombia, mm -hmm. okay? No, that's awesome. I just wanted to uh, know that. So um, World Cup is in a little bit. What being that you guys, are not living in the same country and you have so many people, what are some of the things you're personally doing to like stay sharp on the field? Are you doing a lot of drills or are you running with the local people just trying to run points? What do you been like mainly focusing on recently? There's like, um, first of all, we have like a meeting. We have a, a meeting by Zoom or by Teams all the Thursdays, okay? And we start to practice the names, we see the faces, we talk about it, but each player has to work his physics has to train his physique and also has to shoot all the weekends with the local with the local teams. Okay, so every guy is preparing by himself in the in in his own town, mm -hmm. and then we put it together in October 30. The next week we put it together. Are we gonna share like a one week in Colombia, and then we travel to to USA? Yeah, no, that's gonna be a super helpful for you guys for sure. Um, so okay, I'm just going through these questions here. Uh, yeah, go, oh, we kind of covered all the questions that people want to get to. Perfect. So I can ask kind of stuff what I want. So what sponsors are you guys running this year? You said you're using uh, HK and DLX. Yeah. Yes. Right now, like this year we start with HK army and also we start to shoot looks. Okay. The Excel in, in the tanks we use Immortal. Mm -hmm. and and we have bunker kings okay then you set here we have the the new loader oh nice yeah 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 yeah. i use the control loader i love it man yes the control yes that one we have yeah that's all that's sick so yeah i kind of wanted to know maybe what the future was but i guess i guess you really don't know but i do kind of have a question is that Say you guys play really well, you have a great performance, and Tom Cole asks you to join the pro leagues next year. Is that something that the Wild Dogs are interested in? No, of course, and and something that I have to tell you, like in Vegas, we always like uh, uh, we take presents to the people, like for organization, the sponsors, and when we meet Tom Cole, he he told us the idea, like, uh, hey guys, uh, this year, like I I have an idea in mind. It's not something hundred percent sure, but. Uh, I'm trying to make like a, a NXL tournament in South America and build like a, a, a league in South America and may compete the teams and the team that wins in the overall, I wanted to play 
in the World Cup in the Pro Division. What do you think about that? The teams will register to play the NXL of South America. They will travel. They will compete. And, and we say, of course, you, you can't with us. We're going to be there. The NXL will have presence in South America, Latin America. And if the, the, the team that wins the ranking of the overall is the one that is going to play Pro Division, be sure that the Wild to Latin America is going to be there. So that one is the initial idea he has in the mind. Maybe because of this COVID situation, he has to adjust the plan. And right. that is maybe what he invited us to us. But that, yeah. I think that was the, the, the initial idea because yeah. he told us, hey, I wanted to make a national a NXL in South America. Okay, and the and the team that wins the overall, we play in the World Cup. Yeah, unfortunately, because everyone's it, adjusting their plans right now. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> because his idea is to make it is is to make it a, a real World Cup, invite a team from different places from USA. Absolutely. So I know he was looking originally, like you said, Europe, Asia, and Latin America, uh, and things like that. So kind of going a, a little bit back further, I know you said. Um, you know, there's a league in Colombia, there's a league in Ecuador and things like that. I actually, um, have you played any, um, cause I know Tom Cole used to have a woods ball league, UWL, there was UWLs in Colombia, there was UWLs in Ecuador. So I went to Ecuador to play woods ball and we played against, oh my God. I think the guy was like the general of like Ecuador that we played. Oh my God. What was this team called? But, but, but what was like, uh, what happened over here? Like the people that play woods ball, play woods ball. Like gotcha. we, don't, we, we don't like the one that plays speed ball doesn't mix with the woods ball guy. That's, gotcha. That is something different that happened in America. Like uh, you see the, the pro going and playing a woods ball. Here it, it's totally different because what happened? Uh, the, the, the people that play woods ball doesn't have like a, the, the same resources because they shoot less paint. Okay, so for right. them it's, it's more cheaper to play. It's more it's more cheaper to go and travel because they only shoot in one day uh, one five hundred paintballs. Okay, at least we have to shoot one case. So, yeah. So and 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 it's different. They use Steedman. They doesn't use like um, electronic uh, guns like us. They they used to use Steedman more more rural people. No, I, yeah, I mean when we when we went there's a little bit mix of both and and the same thing that you were kind of saying um I think you know Ecuador it's it's similar thing where you know we we're, we're coming from America you know we had our 10 15 cases there waiting and then we saw a team with one box of paintballs and they were splitting it up between everybody and I was like uh you know we 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 just went you know and and we just went to go you know what I mean we ended up letting it was in Costa Rica or wherever we were we just let the, the teams there play for the finals because we were like we we beat all these guys. We were just there, kind of like an ambassador type of thing. So so kind of bringing it bringing it back and everything like that. Um, I know you you kind of harped on that. You know, you guys are only you know it's like three hundred bucks a month average salary there, and you know you guys as far as you know shooting you know pallets upon pallets of paint. Um, it's a little bit. It does. It's not like that down there. You guys. I mean, you guys mostly you do more drills than you know. Try to maximize the case of paint. What's something that you guys kind of do to kind of limit um, shooting a lot of paint? Because like, obviously it's expensive. Look, like like when we start to train, like I I, I start to play and I was in the in, I was in the school. Okay, so in those in those time we used to train twice in the week, only drills without paint, only drills without paint. And then on the Saturday was the training with pain. So even uh, I get out from the school and the the the, the bus school, he, he put me in the paintball field. They led me over there and they my, my parents brought me over there. Okay. But twice on the week on the week, we only train drills like how to slide, how to make the simulation of shoot, okay, how to make the snaps without pain, working like at the positions, okay. That, that is something that we did a, a lot, a lot. Yeah, yeah like work and, on your form and all that kind of stuff. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then on the weekends was with pain, but normally you, you buy like a, a half of a case. You 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 buy thousand thousand paintballs. And in those times, I don't know if you remember. You remember the loader that was Empire that have a small grill down that you you give it. 
the, the yeah, freak yeah. and give me 15 volts. So we don't, we don't, we take out the batteries of the loader because if you put the batteries, you will shoot all the pain. So you play only with the drill of the loader, only 15 volts. <laughs> so we're playing, making the drill like that. Okay, take out the batteries, only 15 volts. So you always that turn the, the grill, you, you have only 15 volts. Yeah. So I, we make a lot of drills, one on one, uh, three three balls per bunker, okay? Making a, snap, a lot of snaps because we try to, to take advantage of the pain that we have. Yeah. Of, of course, was a lot of people that go to the field that have, that are available to, to buy, to purchase two cases, okay? Yeah. That, that, that's something that happened a lot. Yeah, no, no, for sure. So I got, I got a little, I know you said that you guys haven't, but I know like Armada is the the classic pro team out of Mexico. Like have you given ever thought to doing the ICPLs, the classic league or, or no, you're just strictly because you said it's so divided in your country. You're just focused on speedball. No, like we, we never play in a, against like a Mexican team. Like they have traveling to, to Colombia are not too much. Because Mexico, you know, is like a one side from America. So they never mix like a, with the Latin American people. When mm -hmm. we make the tournaments, it's pretty tough that a Mexican team comes to, to compete. And, we, and for us, we never have been playing a tournament in Mexico. Never. As a team, we never have been playing a tournament over there. So I, I cannot say, I cannot talk about the teams from Mexico. Because, uh, frankly speaking, I don't have a, a lot of information from them. Oh, okay. No, I was just uh, kind of interested. So, um, yeah, Waldo, I think we hit everything. You got anything else you want to ask him? I mean, if anything that, you know, uh, Camilla wants to, you know, talk about or anything like that, that'd be his time. And then he can, you know, shout out his sponsors. And we'll definitely have to have him on, you know, after World Cup, after we see how they do and everything like that. So, um Camilo, anything that you want to speak about or no. any rumors you want to put to bed or um, any no, sponsors no. or people you want to thank? Go on, man. This no, your show. About the rumors, like everything, like uh, we are focused in the things we have to do because you know that always you're going to have fans. You're always going to have people that will talk and uh, chat about you. So yeah. so that, that is part of the game. So Exactly. We, we are like... Uh, chill in that in that aspect because we're not going to focus thinking oh this guy is talking about the that we doesn't deserve the spot we are focused that that we have the place we had is the time that we show our talent is the time that we can prove to the to the industry that we have the capabilities to be and play in the pro division so we are focusing in our team okay we don't think like these people is saying that this another guy is taking like in the gossip we are not focused on that and, and for finish, hey, thank you very much for this opportunity. It helped us a lot to, to clear, to tell the history of, of wild dogs, like all the efforts we do to go and travel the whole seasons. We've been playing since 2016, the whole seasons. And, and, and of course, thanks for our sponsorship, uh, HK Army, DLX, Immortal, WeatherTech, of course, NXL, okay? And we have a lot of people that are supporting us and also in, in, in South America and Latin America, uh, we start like a, to put together all the people and make us uh, making, sending good news for us, sending good energy to make a good paper in the profile. Yeah, no, dude, for sure. We're going to send you all of our positive energy. I mean, I'm pulling for you guys. And yeah, dude, fuck the haters, dude. People are going to be saying shit, bro. If I could give you guys any advice, stay off Facebook. You don't need to be seeing any of that shit. You guys got the right mind. You're focused. And that's what's most important. You, uh, yeah, you no, but, stay but, off the but, meme pages, dude. The paintball standard. You don't yeah, need that stuff. Yeah, no, but but we see it uh, and we love it. Okay, it, it's nice that, that people talk of the team. Yeah, of course, it's nice. If they talk good, but things, they are talking. So 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 it's good for us. We always well, are seeing like the, the, the best things of the of the situation. Yeah, no, exactly. Like I said, it's all about what you guys make of it. So I'm glad to see that you guys are doing that. And uh, again, yeah, Camille, thank you again for coming on. We're definitely going to have to have you back to do a recap afterwards, regardless of how you do. We'll love to hear a breakdown. I mean, 
you're living all of us like little divisional guys dream man you guys got the opportunity to go play pro man so as a divisional oh, dude, yeah. man, do us proud, dude. Do us proud, man. Show them that you're worth yeah, it. Yeah, yes. Of course. And I think it's the dream of of everybody. Everyone wants to play in the pro field. And, and as I tell you, it's a, it's a dream become true. And we are very excited. And we're going to give our 100%. Be well, sure dude, of that. Dude, we, we will be watching on Go Sports live out your dreams, man. So, again, thank you again for coming on. Thank you, the guys, for listening and tuning in. We really appreciate it. And we'll catch you guys all on the next episode. Take it easy. Have the